Winston and the Dinosaurs. Written, illustrated, and read by Megan Reginald. Dedicated to all my nieces and nephews, Kate, Aiden, Brooklyn, Hallie, Penelope, Lily, and Lucan, who know better than anyone else just how much their aunt loves dinosaurs. Winston the mouse lived in an apartment with his two human roommates and a cat named Jack. Winston loved his home and his friends. He also loved to look at books. Sometimes Winston's human friends would leave out the books they had been reading when they went to sleep at night. This made Winston very happy because most of the books were too big and heavy for him to open by himself. Look, Winston, tonight there is a book about dinosaurs on the table. Winston happily flipped through the big pages, learning all about the great big animals from the past. He read about big two-legged dinosaurs with sharp teeth for eating meat, big four-legged dinosaurs with flat teeth for eating plants, and big, flying, not-quite dinosaurs with big beaks for catching small animals and fish. There were big, rumbling volcanoes exploding with lava and great, powerful earthquakes that shook the dinosaurs and moved the land they lived on. After reading for a while, Winston yawned and waved goodnight to Jack the Cat on his way to sleep. He crawled into his matchbox bed and curled up in his dish rag blanket. It was a good thing Winston lived where he did and when he did. There were few to no dinosaurs to worry about in his apartment. Suddenly, Winston awoke to a loud stump, stump, stump. He jumped out of bed and ran out of his mouse hole to see what was happening. Oh no, Winston, this is not your apartment. All around him, he saw big green trees, huge bushy ferns with big reddish branches, and the ground was shaking. Winston gasped as some of the tree trunks started moving. Those are not tree trunks, Winston. Those are very big feet. A large dinosaur plomped by, walking slowly and waving its long tail with big spikes on the end back and forth as he went. Winston read about him in the book. This was a stegosaurus. Those great big plates on his back could grow two feet high. The dinosaur was about 30 feet long, about the length of four horses. Winston stayed out of his way as the stegosaurus walked around looking for yummy ferns to eat. Winston turned around to go back inside his mouse hole, but oh no, he could not find the door. He jumped and skidded and climbed up a nearby pile of rocks to get a better view. Oh dear, Winston, those are not lumpy rocks. That is the bumpy back of another dinosaur. The great big flat dinosaur did not even notice Winston riding on her back. This was an ankylosaurus. He read about her in the book. This dinosaur was flat and low with short legs, and she was covered in hard bony armor all over her head, back, and tail. Her tail ended in a big bony club that swished back and forth. This was used to whack any large dinosaurs that tried to eat her. Winston leapt onto a pile of actual rocks nearby and watched as the ankylosaurus walked away towards a watering hole to get a drink. Uh-oh, Winston. What is that flapping sound? Suddenly, Winston was snatched off of the rocks by what looked like a flying dinosaur. Oh, Winston had seen these in the book as well. While it looked like a dinosaur, it was actually what is called a pterosaur, and this one in particular was called Pteranodon. He measured 20 feet from wingtip to wingtip. Oh my, Winston, you are very high now. The Pteranodon sneezed a great big pterosaur sneeze and dropped Winston right out of the air. Oof, cried Winston, as he landed on something very scaly, still very high off the ground. It was a dinosaur's head. With a start, Winston stumbled off the big head that was busy plucking leaves from the tops of the trees. Winston slid all the way down her long, long neck, 
tumbled across her big bumpy back and slid again all the way down her long, long tail until he landed in a bush with a little mouse thump. This was a diplodocus. This big pretty dinosaur could grow over 80 feet from nose to tail. That is as long as two big school buses in a row. Now that is a lot of dinosaur. Winston climbed through the plants and stumbled into a sunny clearing. He ducked as a heavy four-legged quadrupedal dinosaur with a big frill and long horns galloped over him. Winston knew this dinosaur. This was a triceratops. The great big frill and horns on his head were used for defense and decoration, like the antlers on a deer. Winston watched as he ran by, bellowing, and wondered what he was running from. Oh, dear, Winston. Out from the trees popped a very large two-legged, bipedal dinosaur with tiny arms, big strong legs, a huge head, and a lot of teeth. She chased after the Triceratops, both of them shaking the ground as they ran. Winston was very glad to be so small. He was so tiny that the Tyrannosaurus Rex had not even noticed him. The ground around Winston started to shake, but instead of a big dinosaur walking by, this time it was shaking because of an earthquake. Big rocks began tumbling down a nearby mountainside as the rumbling shook everything loose. Winston climbed a big tree to get away from all the rolling rocks, just in time to see... Oh my, Winston, that mountain is actually a volcano and it is erupting. The great big mountain nearby started to spit out thick black smoke and ashes and bright orange hot lava. All the dinosaurs were running away, but Winston was stuck in the branches of the tree. A large lump of burning rock hit the tree and knocked Winston off the branch. He got tangled up in a big leaf and he struggled to get free as he tumbled out of the tree until... Um... Oh, Winston, that is not a prehistoric leaf that you are wrapped up in. That is your dishrag blanket. Winston hopped out of his bed, ready to run if there were any dangerous dinosaurs or volcanoes around. But... All he could see was his table made out of a jar lid, his matchbox bed, and the dim nightlight of the apartment coming through his mouse hole door. Oh, thank goodness, Winston. It was all just a dream. Winston snuck out into the dark apartment and found his friend Jack the Cat sleeping on the couch. Winston gave him a great big mouse hug just for not being a dinosaur. Jack sighed and stretched in his sleep, but did not wake up. Winston breathed in the fresh, ash-free air of his home and trotted back to his mouse hole. Perhaps, Winston whispered to himself as he snuggled back into bed, some books are better bedtime stories than others. As he began drifting off to sleep again, he made plans to read a cookbook about delicious food tomorrow night. Maybe that would give him less dangerous dreams. The End